Okay, so we're going to look at rigging um, this kind of claw machine thing here. So um, the first thing to know about rigging is um, you always want to make sure you've kind of got your model um, completely finished at this point because we're going to be linking this to a phone rig. So like the last thing you want to do is link it all up to a phone rig and then realize that you've got to redo kind of elements of your model. So um, obviously in this example, I've just got a sphere here, but you would have this as whatever your kind of final asset kind of is. Like, I guess you could go back and un unwrap this after um, you've rigged it because you're not actually going to change the, um, the model and so on. But um, yeah, any kind of modeling should uh, be completely kind of finalized at this stage. Okay, so the uh, next thing you want to consider is making sure that you've got everything freeze transforms. Well, at the moment it's not letting me do that, and that's because I've, I've rigged it before. So I'm just going to right click on here and just do unlock selected. And then do freeze transforms, delete history. Just make sure that kind of everything is basically ready, ready for rigging. Um, we should probably have our um, pivot on world zero as well. Um, and so now that we've done that, we can probably hide this asset. We don't need that right now. We're just going to look at how to rig this. So um, the first thing we need to do is come over to our rigging tab. And we'll see we've got this option here for create join. So I'm just going to hit that. Um, although it doesn't show that it's highlighted here, it is at the active tool. And I'm just going to press X and click, hold down X and click in the center there. Now the reason I do that is because it creates that bone directly on everything on zero scale of one. So when I move it, it's all relative to like world zero. Um, if you're struggling to like see your joint, you can customize the size of each joint here in the radius that I show you that. Um, let's just put it back to the fold. Or you can go to display, animation, and then joint size, and you can ramp this up as well in order to see the joints. So that's relative for all joints, that option up there, and this one here. So yeah, if you go to Windows, sorry, yeah, display, animation, joint size, in there, this is relative for all joints, whereas this one here is per joint. So yeah. Okay, so with our first joint made, I'm just going to pull him up to here, and then then go to click and make another joint here as well. So um, our first joint really is doesn't matter where it's positioned because this is um, well, I'd often keep it on one zero, but in this case because we've got everything kind of dotted about the scene, I'm just going to stick it in there. And um, this is basically our root bone, so we might as well just rename this um, raw root. So this, this bone basically animates nothing. It just acts as like a, um, you know, um, the actual root of our, um, of our rig. So everything can kind of come off this, basically. And the reason why we'll need that will become much clearer kind of later on. So this guy here, I'm going to hold down V and I'm going to snap him over here because this bone is going to move our, these two poles and these two bits are going to move that kind of um, along the X axis along here. Um, I'm going to control D and I'm going to stick him in the middle of this. Um, again, you can use snap if you want. Um, snap is obviously um, particularly relevant when you're doing rotation on things like this. When you're just kind of moving up and down and left and right, um, it's not so you know it's not so essential. So we'll stick him there. And basically, this this um, bone is going to move um, this this device with all this on it. It's going to move it up and down up and down those rails, like so. Okay, so we'll select that joint again, clone that, and stick this one here. Now, um, basically, normally I would have, be really easy to snap this, because I would have a, um, oh, in fact, I already did it before I made the tutorial, so. Um, yeah, it's really useful having that center point there, because we can hold V and just snap onto there, like that. So, in fact, yeah, if you really want to be nice and precise about it, we can clone him up to there, like that, and then we know that's in the dot center too. Okay, so now we have a control for um, moving this device um, up and down along here. We have a control for moving this along here, and we have a control for moving this up and down. That's what this one's going to do. So let's just name these again as well. So if I um, select this, I'm going to try and think of a suitable name for it, so maybe we'll claw rail. 
that one will also call call rail is the two. This one will call um, call dropper or something. Like that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is set up free bones for um, rotating these. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So we'll clone this guy again, so control D on your keyboard. And um, I'm going to go to my top view. Then we're going to position this bone kind of like roughly here. And then we'll make sure we go to our front view as well and just position that up there. Basically, that claw is going to react to the rotation of that. So this claw here. So you need to make sure that this is in the right place so that it, this will rotate basically where you want the pivot to be. So that should be about right. For the next one, in fact, I'm going to lower the radius of these a bit too. For the next one, Control D again, and we'll position him where we want him to go. But what we also need to do is go to rotate mode and just rotate. Um, if you hold down J in this case, we can just get that to position. Um, I'm just going to check actually. If I just go to my rotate tool, I'm just going to put my absolute here down to five, just to see if um, that's got a uh, yeah, it's got five degree rotation on it, so it's good to be precise. So we'll clone that guy again. Again, position him kind of roughly here, and again, rotate until it lines up like so. So the reason why we get that rotation right is because we want to use that rotation axis, axis like that to rotate the claw kind of up and down like so. Right, with all those made, we've got a control for everything. We just need a control for this now. So again, I'm going to clone this guy, and I'm going to snap him onto that top there, there. And I'm just going to pull him down roughly in the center. Now, um, well, I can actually get it perfectly centered by just picking, um, snapping to vert again to there. Now, getting it the way the in the center is essential if you're going to do any rotation on the model. It's not so much of a problem if, if the model's just going to move left to right, up and down, or well, along, just going to move along X, Y, and Z. But any rotation, you need to make sure that the pivot's in exactly the right place. So I'm guessing this might have a little bit of rotation on it, so it is right to get that pivot in the right place there. Okay, so I'm just going to hide this guy, and let's start linking this all together. Um, in fact, I'm going to name these properly as well. So let's select these three here. I'm going to call these claw claw one, two, three. There we go. So everything should be named OK, apart from our toy there. So I'm going to call this claw toy. OK, so let's start linking it together. So if we select our... Um, now, you, what you want to do is work from the, you know, the very kind of end kind of twig, I guess you'd call it, up to the um, up to the very kind of final root. So I'm going to select these three, and then select this one here, and just hit P to pair it. So that means when I move this one, which obviously moves this kind of claw bit, um, all those three move with it. But if I animate this individual one, that moves independently. So yeah, obviously by pressing, by using that shortcut P, that basically means it's parenting. So if we look in our thing here as well, we can see the claw dropper now has all three kind of claws attached. So I'm going to select the dropper, and I'm, then I'm going to click here to select the rail two, and then I'm going to press P again. So now that should mean that when we move him, um, that moves all of the um, dropper and the claws with it. So again, we select the let's maximize that. We select rail two, and then we select the other rail, and we just hit P parent. So now when we're going to move that rail along left and right, that's going to move with it. And if we hit that one, that's going to move that with it like so. Um, the next thing we need to do is select that one, um, the rail two, and then our root and just hit P so that they're parented together. And the last thing we need to do is select the toy and select the root and hit P like that. Now the reason I've done that is so that um, when we move the actual kind of claw and the dropper. All of that moves independently at this 
kind of, of the whatever our kind of toy is there. So that's why the root is really useful. So we can move the whole thing together if we need to, although we will never need to do that. Um, the toy is combined now in the rig with everything else. Okay, so we're at a good stage there. Um, let's just pause the video.